Hello everybody. I just wanted to take a second and make a quick video for you guys because lately I've been putting a lot of posts on Instagram about national shocks from MX Tech and kind of stating about how good they are, how plush they are and all the benefits that you might experience from having one of these shocks in your bikes. I want to take a second and just show you that what the internals are like on this shock, why it's so good and it's explain, in my opinion, why this is the best shock on the market right now for your bike, whether it's motocross or off-road. Um, there's nothing gimmicky about Jeremy's shock. This is just straight up extremely high quality components uh, laid out in a manner that is tried and true and proven and just works. So... As you can see with the National Shock, he's got a Kashima coating on the reservoir here and then on the main body of the shock as well. They use a DLC coated shock shaft. So DLC is very low friction. It's 10 times slipperier than chrome. Uh, here's what a chrome standard shaft looks like out of your stock WP shock. Um, so he's just doing everything he can to eliminate friction. And this is a very, very smooth shock. That's one of the sensations you'll notice right away when you uh, ride it. Another one is, here's a standard piston in a WP shock, 2017 and up. And it uses like kind of a nylon uh, seal band or wear band around the piston. Whereas Jeremy's piston out of the National Shock uses a low friction seal band. It's a Teflon, PTFD coated uh bushing style band that is has way way less drag on the body of the shock so couple the low friction band with the kashima coating and the action in there is very very smooth uh, you're also aware of skf fork seals and how low a stiction they have uh, jeremy's seal head that he uses in the national shock incorporates skf seals in the seal head and which also produces very low drag or stiction on the DLC coated shaft. So it's a very smooth operating shock. Uh, the reservoir, like I said, that's on that shock is Kashima coated also. Um, the piston that's in it uh, is Jer's design and it has very, very low friction qualities as well uh, on this reservoir. So as the shaft moves and transfers oil from the main body into the reservoir, you get a seamless transition on the piston movement that manages the rod charge from the, from the main body. So another thing that Jeremy Shock has is what he has designed and calls a huck valve. So because this is something that's inside your suspension, not too many people get to see it very often, but in a shock, this is the kind of heart and soul of a huck valve. So on the end of your shock shaft, after you have, there'd be your shim stack, your base plate, your piston. So all your shims and valving on the shaft here, instead of having just a traditional nut on top of the shaft, there's a secondary piston and shim stack that goes on top of the shaft. So as your shock is compressing deep into the stroke, this cup, or the, the huck part of the huck valve system, sits inside the shock body at the very top of the shock, like right up there. So this sits right in here on the shock. So as you get into that last bit of travel, so on here the depth might only be, I don't have a measuring tape on me, but a couple inches. Um, the linkage... Uh, of your shock makes it so it's about, I don't know, six inches, the last four to six inches of wheel travel, roughly off the top of my head. This piston will drop into this bore and dramatically increase the amount of compression damping or resistance to compression um, as your shock is in that last part of the bottoming of the stroke. So that's what a huck valve does. It's hydraulically controlled. So it's another piston and shim stack, hydraulically controlled bottoming resistance. Um, so that's in every national shock as well. Uh, Jeremy's compression adjuster that he uses, we have low speed compression, 
mid-speed compression, and then low-speed rebound in one adjuster. And then beside it, he has a high-speed compression adjuster. So I just wanted to show you quickly kind of what those look like too, because again, we see lots of this from the outside on Jer's shocks or on the magazine or even pictures that I've posted on Instagram, but nobody ever explains what it's about. So it's actually a piston and shim stack, multiple of them, actually three, because we control three different circuits uh, in here. So we have complete control on your mid-speed and high-speed compression and low-speed compression and how it feels in the shock, not only with external adjustments through a formula Allen key, but we can also internally make adjustments on here. And depending on your needs, if it's motocross or woods, I will shim and set up this compression adjuster very different for a motocross or arena cross application versus a woods application or enduro. So on the high speed adjuster, which as you can see on the shock, there's here's your mid speed, low speed and low speed rebound and then your high speed compression on the other side. So we have two different oil circuits so that when you have a very large or square edge bump or root or rock and we have a lot of shaft speed, we need to move a lot of oil quickly. We can't move that oil fast enough through this piston and a shim stack on its own. That's why we have this basically a spring loaded check valve ultimately is really what it is. There's a tapered needle that controls, opens or closes an orifice. We have a spring and then our red adjuster will add more or less preload to that spring and change the point at which this pointed part can move away from the hole and allow oil to bleed into the reservoir. So not only do we have different tapers of cones, which would give you more or less leverage with the oil flow. So we have a soft and like a medium and a hard cone. We also have different rate of springs we can use on that high speed adjuster. I'm sure you're aware that the needs of, like I say, supercross, arena cross, pro outdoors, amateur outdoors, trials-ish moto, like woodsy technical riding, it's all at different needs. And so, we have so much flexibility with the shock and tunability that we can make it work for really any setting that you need. A lot of people, what motivates them to get an aftermarket shock is they want plushness on square edges. And that's where this shock works exceptionally well. And I think a lot of it comes down to piston design. Jeremy's piston in the national shock has three very large compression ports, which flows a lot of oil when it's asked of it. This is the stock piston in a WP shock, and it's much more restrictive than Jeremy's. Um, this is fine for motocross or arena cross where we need a lot of bottoming resistance. Uh, but at some point, those ports can only flow so much oil and the limitations are met quickly. And that's when you get kicking and deflection. So with Jared's piston, we can flow a lot more oil and prevent that kick or exceeding its abilities to flow oil. On the flip side, for a motocross or arena cross application, which I've raced this shock in arena cross, and we can control the oil flow with our shim stack. We can get more aggressive with our shims, and this shock can be very, very stiff, and yet by managing the rod charge into the reservoir, we can still make it not kick on braking bumps. It's, it's crazy how good this shock actually is. So if you guys have any questions at all about any of these components, a lot of them are available separately. So you could put them into your own WP shock, like his triple adjuster. We can simply install that into your shock with a build. Um, we can always install high flow pistons into your shock with different valving specs we have. Uh, we can put a Kashima coated reservoir, which he calls a tank. Um, that can be installed onto your stock WP shock. There's a lot of things we can do without going to the extreme of replacing the whole shock absorber. But if you want the ultimate in performance, then this is your girl. So like I say, any questions at all, shoot me a DM, email me, Jeff, G-E-O-F-F -F, at gpmoto.ca, or you can always shoot me a text on my cell phone, area code 250-819. 4788. Thanks guys. Take care.